Hey guys and welcome back to Behind the Kabuki. Today I am speaking to you about my five tips on how to become a successful makeup artist. Listen closely because I have been around for a while. I know that I look so young. <laughs> People say to me, how old are you? Like 12? I'm like, no, 35. I said it. Anyway, so I am sharing with you um, my top five tips on how to be a successful makeup artist if you're trying to break into the business. My first tip is assist. I was adamant about being a good assistant. So what did I do? I did a makeup artist assistant course. How to assist a makeup artist. The problem is these days is that most people want to assist, but they don't know how to, so they never get called back. Through doing this assistant course, which I did through Mandy Lavana, you need to find her, track her down, and do her course. Um, I was so privileged and honored to become the makeup assistant to the amazing Ray Morris. If you haven't heard of Ray Morris, you need to get on her. She is a female, not a male. Um, <laughs> she has um, five, I think, five incredible makeup books and is seen as Australia's most famous um, makeup artist. She is internationally renowned and I have learned a great deal from her. So get around someone that you look up to. She was someone that I saw as pretty amazing and I thought, yep, want to be like her. No point in assisting somebody that you don't want to be like, that would be pointless. Follow someone that you say, yeah, I really like her. I want to aspire to be like her and I know that she's cutting edge. She's working in the business. She is not a washed up has been. She is always reinventing herself and pushing the boundaries and that's what I'm about and I want to learn from the best. I got to look inside her kit and learn things that you would never learn at school. So get an assistant. My second tip is shoot. TFP, everyone has this thing, you know, saying, you know, don't do TFP, don't do TFP. What does that even mean? It means working for free, time for print. That's what TFP stands for. Do that as much as you can at the start. I'll tell you why, because you're going to see your work and what it looks like through a lens. You're going to see what you did wrong um, and what you can do better. So um, you see eye structure and how certain eyelids and the things that you've done through your makeup come across in photography work um, and I also say that when you shoot send them through to your makeup mentor send them through to the person that you've been working alongside with and they don't necessarily have to be someone that you've assisted you might have a makeup mentor that you've that you've met on Instagram or on social media or that you've contacted through a creative agency send them your work so that you can get proper feedback remember it doesn't matter what your mum and your husband or your boyfriend think of your work because they're always going to think that you're amazing all your friends from work they're going to think you're great oh my gosh you do amazing things but the truth is what Ray Morris or Pat McGrath Val Garland, all these amazing makeup artists around the world it matters what they think if you want work up to their standard my third point is that don't be afraid. So many people are worried and compare themselves to other people in this industry. It is amazing how many makeup artists that I meet that are incredibly stressed out and afraid of doing something in their career. They are afraid of what other makeup artists might think of what people are going to think of them and that, you know, they don't want to be boxed and they don't want to be that type of makeup artist and they don't want to say this and they don't want to say that and who cares? What, who you are is what makes you different. You have something to offer to this industry that no one else has. Do not copy other people because you think that's what's going to make you successful. It will not. Copying is not a compliment. It's actually highly offensive and us as makeup artists work extremely hard to create something unique and different and it's really annoying when a young makeup artist comes along and rips it off. My fourth step is to take every opportunity as it comes to you. So sometimes you might have an opportunity and you'll be like, eh, that was a dud. Sometimes you'll have a, an opportunity that comes your way and it'll be like a full day of work and you'll get paid $250. The truth is, is that those jobs sometimes lead to amazing jobs. I did a job recently where I was not paid a lot of money and I was excited about it because it was obviously that there could have been some opportunity. So really think about it and be like, what could this lead to? Is this who I am as a makeup artist? Can I see myself doing stuff like this in the future or working with these people? Um, that's how I sort of discern in making a decision about that. And funnily enough, that job led to a client who I actually do makeup now on once a week. I charge that client a great deal of money to travel to her home. She is quite wealthy and she's a celebrity, but it led to that job, which was amazing. So be open to opportunity. Allow yourself to grow as a makeup artist. My fifth one is keep your butt clean. What goes around comes around in this industry and it is extremely difficult to recover from bad behavior in this industry. Don't be self-important. Remember that you're a makeup artist. You're not curing cancer. Even though our job is highly important, 
think of the Devil Wears Prada. Yeah, like, there is, we do have our place in the industry, but you know, we don't want to be those, um, those pretentious, rude, obnoxious people who think that we are extremely important doing makeup. The truth is, yeah, we're all awesome and we're all doing the best we can, but don't push your weight around, don't take over the room, don't be rude to people, and if you are assisting, stay humble. Hey, if you're an amazing makeup artist, stay humble. Like I said, keep your butt clean because it is extremely difficult to recover from um, being a drama queen or bad behavior and you will be very quickly known as that person and shunned out of makeup groups um, or friendships. The other thing that I would like to say on that note is that, you know, there is this talk about Instagram makeup versus real makeup artists. It's all one big joke to me. There is a place for everybody in this industry. If you are an Instagram makeup artist and you contour, contour the crap out of your face and put dots all over the place, kudos to you because let me tell you guys, those girls there like the Lauren Curtises and the Melissa Sassines and all those girls there, that is not my style but it is none of my business and they are laughing all the way to the bank because there is huge money to be made in that type of makeup. But it's not me. We are all called to do our own thing. We are unique and awesome at what we do so don't compare yourself to those people do your thing and do it well um and yeah i hope that they brought you a word of encouragement today be the best that you can be keep doing what you're doing all of you are individually talented keep consistent and connect with other makeup artists get on makeup forums like makeup artists or makeup community australia we encourage each other you know sometimes we poke fun at each other and it's okay to have a laugh and and keep it light-hearted much love to you guys and see you next time on behind the kabuki Bye!